Welcome everyone to our MyFest 2023 session on showcasing AI tools. We've got some lovely um, people from all over the world here today. We've got uh, Cairo, Egypt, um, Vermont in the US, uh, also the west coast of Canada, um, so Christina, and we've got more colleagues from Egypt, Alia, also Samud and Stella also from Canada, and Giannana, also Canada. So thanks very much for joining us today. It's going to be quite a, I think, emergent session. I'll start with showcasing one tool. And then, you know, I'm sure there you'll see it's not very formal. So we'd love for folks to indicate in the chat if you'd like to volunteer to do a quick showcase of an AI tool. And then together, we will do a sort of curated list of tools. We've got a second session as well on the 8th of August. So if you're a little nervous right now and want to have a think about it first, feel free or I'll, I'll share the link to the event and you can always sign up for the second session. Awesome. Thanks. Maha says she's able to share when internet is a bit more stable. Awesome. Okay, so I thought I'd get going with one that I told Maha about recently, which is called um, SciSpace. And I've given you all access, edit access to the Google Slides. So if you want to add another one for anyone who wants to showcase, you can do that. So just want to double check that you can see the screen. It's that yeah. the SciSpace. Yep. And so interestingly, you know how sometimes you find a tool that you like and either it's not free anymore or suddenly the features changed. So luckily this one's still free, but it's got a whole bunch of extra stuff, which is really cool. So on the side over here, so you go to, I'll share the link in the chat. It says it's um, the URL says typeset, but this, the tool is actually called SciSpace. And there were different on the side, you have tools within it. So before it wasn't um, a platform with various tools within it. It was literally just the co-pilot where one would upload a PDF. And I've got one here by Karen Barad, which is quite a difficult text. <laughs> um, it's about post-humanist performativity. So if you have, this is useful, I think, because it has a set of questions and it's like talking about the text with the AI co-pilot. And there are some questions. So if I expand this a little bit, so if I, I did that on the bottom right, you can do some general things like explain the abstract of the paper in two lines, ask it, you know, what are the main contributions of the paper, explain the practical implications, summarize the introduction of this paper, um, methods used in the paper, what data has been used, results and conclusions, or you can write your own question. So these are the kinds of things I think we would love for our students, especially in higher education, <clears throat> to ask when they're reading complex academic texts, right? Um, so this is very much more of a like reading aid um, and kind of scaffolds the way that you would like people to ask questions about academic texts. Um, okay, so the other tools that I found that it also incorporated, I was like, oh, that's so cool. So it's got a literature review. So haven't tried these out a lot yet, but you can actually ask um, discover papers. So you can ask, you know, how does climate change impact biodiversity? And it will give you a bunch of articles. And you can ask your co-pilot questions related to the search results as well. So yeah, we've got some, they've got some summaries, insights, conclusions, you can organize it by year, you can also you can click on, um, you know, show any papers that are open access, you can show papers with PDFs. So this is quite, I think, quite useful. And these are, the, I'm not sure what algorithm they use to decide on the top five papers. Um, but that's, 
you know, they also do a summary of it, insight from the top five papers. Okay, I'm just going to go through these very briefly. Then there's a citation generator. So we know that a lot of kind of AI tools out there are not necessarily built with academia in mind, whereas this one actually is. So you can, you know, get your APA citations here, or I think you can change your citation style. Yes, you can. You can choose MLA. There's a bunch of styles if you want it in a particular style. You can enter the URL for a journal article or a book, um, and then you'll get on the right, you can click on generate and it will generate that citation for you, which is quite a nifty, I think, um, nifty thing to have. And there's a paraphraser. So some of you may be already familiar with tools like Quillbot, but this one is, I think, helps you with tones and also different more languages. So they actually talk about writing more tones and languages than Quillbot and humanize your text with our AI detector. Okay, so you can actually, you can say how long you want it or if you want to expand it, um, academic, fluent, formal. So there, there are quite a few tones here, persuasive, confident, and then you can paraphrase texts accordingly. And then there is an AI detector tool and it's got a Chrome extension as well. So the AI detector, um, you know, if you paste some text, it can actually say, um, you know, there's a little be a little report analyzing that text. Um, I know it is a contentious thing at the moment since things like Turnitin, um, AI detector, some of you who may know about it, there's a phenom phenomena called false positives, where either, you know, text has been generated by a person and it's misidentified it as generated by an AI tool, or it's generated by AI, but it's not picking it up. People have perhaps paraphrased it a lot using a combination of tools, which is quite a common practice. Um, so it's not 100% accurate. Um, so that's why, yeah, I know many people in academia, are, and you can maybe say something in the chat if you want to, um, are quite critical about any tools promising AI detection at the moment. Okay, and and, and as you use SciSpace, you can build up a library, and you can always go back um, and, and use it again. Um, your articles will be there. So the Barad one here and you can have collections so folders of different different articles on different topics all righty so i see Nicola, nothing can i ask you a question yeah sure because I, ever since you showed me this tool sometimes i've been doing something a little bit naughty <laughs> which is when students tell me that the readings are too hard in a course that someone else is teaching i tell them about this tool <laughs> So I wonder, like, if officially you ever do that, because when you try to tell teachers, like in my institution, when I try to tell teachers, you're assigning readings that are above the student's level, and that they're just not going to be able to, read, like, they're, they're just not going to be able to read it, like, that's challenging them without supporting them is not going to get you anywhere. And so if they don't want to make the effort, to, or they can't find a, an equally relevant article that's easier to read, I'm trying to suggest the faculty also to tell their students that they can use this tool. Um, but I personally usually use it with something that I understand well enough that I'll know if its answers are accurate or not. But I don't know, like students wouldn't know, right? They can't read the original art. So I was just wondering, like, do you advise, because we're in a similar position in our institutions, right? So do you tell students about it? Do you tell faculty about it? Or do you just use it yourself? So I do tell lecturers about it. And I say, you know, go and play with it. Often there is a perception, I think, where a lot of, um, lecturers find things useful for their own research, but don't want their students to use it. Um, it's just something I, I've been encountering. And yeah, but it will always say, you know, try it out first, see what you find, use it in ways you imagine your students using it. Um, and if you think it's potentially useful, um, then share it. So it's got these, I mean, here, being able to scaffold the writing process, um I I used to we used to do things like we called it a reading guide. So we had questions on a PDF 
that kind of to to scaffold the critical engagement with the reading or to think about it um, deeper. That was when I was teaching myself. And yeah, it's 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 I think it's it's also discipline specific. Different disciplines engage with texts in different ways. Ah, I see Mirabat, um, especially in a discipline like journalism, perhaps you want to tell us more about that. Yeah, and I think that's always the challenge is people think students are going to use AI tools to plagiarize. <laughs> but there's so much more that we can, you know, I think once lecturers saw this tool, they, you know, they, they're thinking about AI tools changed, which I found quite, quite fascinating um, that, oh, wow, you know, it can, you get tools that help people read and make sense of complex texts. It's not all about writing things um you know and submitting it as your own work um and there are many students though, that do use it as a writing aid especially second language english students um or yeah, students for whom english is not their first language find this particularly use things like paraphrasing and those kind of tools really useful not sure i answered your question maha yeah a little and i think there i mean you're also showing that it can be used as a reading support or for writing support. And depending on what it is you're teaching, there, there are some people in the rhetoric and composition department, so they teach writing, who started to feel, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't be asking students to do annotated bibliography anymore because the AI can do that for them. And then they can do the work of actually reading the articles. You know what I mean? Because this can give you something similar to what you would include in annotated bibliography as can a lot of other tools, but this one, the best thing about this one is you're giving it the article that it's going to do the bibliography from, so it's not going to make up references, right? And that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, we also had an annotated bibliography uh, for the pre-doc students. Um, I don't know the extent to which everyone used or didn't use AI tools, um, but I imagine if, if it was myself as a student, something like this would be really useful. And I think it depends. Annotated bibliography also depends on what you are reading for. Um, if you're looking particular, looking for particular things in relation to a topic. I'm just seeing Vivian's uh, comments. <laughs> Maybe yeah, Vivian. I'm, I'm just like getting like I didn't know about this one. I'm so glad it's 6 a.m. and I'm here. It's just like because first of all, it's like um, with my students, their level of comprehension was like already I was trying to figure out, okay, look, you guys just read the abstract and then just copy the abstract and then just take some quotes from it and try and put it in your own words. And it was like, God, this is like really kind of stupid. Like, like, because but then I see like if, if they have, when they have access to a tool like this, they won't actually read it or some of them, you know, they'll just copy and paste that work as their own because they're not really caring too much about producing their own work or trying to go through a struggle to read something really difficult. They're just trying to copy and paste. But so, Vivian, can I ask you a question? Yeah. When yeah. you ask them to produce a, like an annotated uh, thing about a reference that they're supposed to have read, yeah. I assume that you're asking them to do that so that they can then use it to help build an argument about something. So they don't understand what they've written. They then won't be able to do the next step, right? And they won't be able to reflect and add their opinion and add it on to other things. And then their building blocks will look disjointed. Right? Yeah, I'm curious yeah. what everyone else thinks as well, obviously. Need to, yeah, thanks, Maha. I'll, if, yeah, whatever else someone would, yeah. So often if we think in terms of learning outcomes and the kind of lower levels of Bloom's taxonomy, I think AI tools can really help with the lower levels, but it's not gonna help them with the application. Um, so it's useful for some things, 
but you're not going to do very, very well. Could you try asking it? Like, could you try asking it a question? Like, for example, is this a the broad paper? Yes. Or what are you, yeah, because I'm on my phone, so I can't see where I'm. So, for example, could you possibly ask it to apply the main concepts in this paper to a different context and see what it does? Sure. Let's do that. And others, please. I mean, if you have other ideas if you want uh, Nicola to speak a response to this thing. I like this question. Apply the concept of posthumanist performativity to students' use of AI in education. And I'm reading it out so that people who can't see the screen are able to, to know what this did. Hmm. So your sound is a little bit laggy, uh huh? So here it says the paper doesn't provide a direct answer to this question. However, we can use the concept of posthumanist performativity to analyze students' use of AI. Um, it emphasizes the role of language and discourse. Should I copy it into the chat, perhaps? So I think it's still quite helpful. Maybe, maybe you'll want to have a read and let me know what you think. So I'm realizing that to many, this concept may be very new and has a whole history. I mean, post-humanist um, perspectives. And I think one would need kind of that background to make a judgment about whether this is useful or not as well. But it would probably be a good starting point. So Vivian says, I think most of my students would have a hard time deciphering this chunk of writing. Okay, so if the person didn't know what discourse meant, for example, you could ask a follow-up question. Maybe explain what is meant by discourse in the above. I don't think the like regular did. Oh God, yeah. I mean, what is this piece? But I don't think the regular dictionary helps with discourse. And I'm one. I don't, I don't even remember if I've used like the Oxford Learner's Dictionary for that. And I usually just have to tell them discourse produces the effects that it names, or some such Judith Butler kind of quote something. Oh yeah, because then that that blue stuff, the explanation. And oh well, there it goes into it. Okay.
So it's not giving me like discourse defined by G is this. Um, it's it's giving a response in relation to this particular article. Um, so it says the paper does not provide a specific citation for this definition. It's based on how the author's interpretation and application of posthumanist theory. Um, however, the concept of discourse is widely discussed in social theory and cultural studies. There are many sources that provide similar definitions. So the person would still, I think, need to go and do that extra work to find that. Um, I see Mirvat, you've raised your hand. Uh, yes, hi. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, we, yeah, what I what i'm also um, concerned about is sometimes our students um, are not very um, uh, uh, acquainted to asking questions so if they have a context of the sort that they do not really understand some of the the, the wordings um i don't I'm, I'm also i'm very concerned that they would not even ask uh so this is one thing the other thing i, I, I what what i tried and it worked uh, that's not in this same context is that i asked them to produce definitions of what they think of whatever I want them to, to produce. And then they start to dig and find and compare and contrast. Uh, this makes it easier for them to produce the language that is um, um, yeah, a little bit uh, equivalent to their standards. Because in, in classes, I'm, I'm not sure about classes in, uh, on your side, but uh, at AEC, some, we have students uh, that the, their, the level of their expertise and their language and their abilities are fluctuating and some of them are very uh, savvy at um, uh, language and sort some are not and some also are coming from Nasan Sanawaya uh, Amma school governmental school they don't they are not ever encouraged to ask questions and they are very acquainted, much acquainted to memorizing so all these are factors that if I give them this kind of uh, again if I, I pursue this kind of activity can I would have concerns in court. That's it. Thank you. But I think your activity that you describe is very, very useful. So getting them to find definitions and compare and contrast. Um, I see Mahas added American University in Cairo, where students are usually fluent but not native speakers of English. Yeah similar to, to here. Okay, and I see, so to me, um, Shahinaz, you've shared that privately, but I'm going to uh, share it with the group anyway. Um, consensus app, um, Shahinaz is saying that the citation is more reliable. Okay, so we do find that, I think, with different AI tools is, some are a bit more reliable than others, but it goes back to that some of the principles of, you know, you still need to fact check because you're getting um, results that are most probable um, in statistical terms um, and not necessarily the most, always the most correct or the most reliable. And Reem is asking, does this tool work with books as well or only with academic papers? I think if you can import it, um, you know, like a whole book. I'm not sure if you can just do a URL to a book, like to Amazon or whatever. I haven't tried that yet myself. Well, but if you have the illegal PDF of the book, you could probably <laughs> upload it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to advocate that, but yes, I'm sure that would work just fine. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, a good idea. <laughs> yeah, we're on we're on recording and everything. So don't do that. <laughs> Cool. Any last questions about SciSpace? I do recommend you try it out. Oh, the exact URL is in the slides, but I'll share it here as well in the chat. And over these showcasing sessions, we'll be um, 
basically developing a curated list of AI tools together. All righty. Um, yes, sir, would you like to showcase your tool next? Well, thank you. Uh, uh, so um, the tool that I'm going to share now is called Jenny.ai. So this tool actually works when you have like this, uh, what I call writer's block. So you might be pro or against this idea, which is kind of, uh, you know, controversial around whether a, writer, a writer's block is, is already there, like real or not. But you're just going to write texts and it just uh, offers suggestions. And the suggestions that are being offered are actually not like one word or two words it can offer sentences and sentences and it can go on go on until you just copy the text and take it or you just take ideas or whatever i'm gonna share now and uh, let's see how it goes um, can you see it uh, yes so we can Okay. Jenny. Okay. So here I'm gonna write this title. I'm gonna, for example, write showcasing AI, and then then. Yeah, and there and I'm here it. It just, you know, produce text, I think. They use. And if I want some new text, it will. So are you clicking on the cycle button oh, the that's accept. making it produce new text? Accept. The accept. So but if you want new text. Mm -hmm. So the, the accept with, it has new text here. And here is the text that comes. And when I just click. And here it can cite. So like if you have any research or something like that and you, you've given it a, a, because this tool you can upload documents to. Here I'm creating a new document on the website. But if you have your own document and you just, um, you know, upload it to the tool with an upgrade because this tool is not completely free. And then you keep, you you just upload the, the document that you have and you start working on that. And when you work on that, you cite whatever you, whatever is there and it will, uh, you know, take the info from doc the document and cite. Or if you're working with a literature review and say that this source said so and so and so, it will it will cite it for you. Unfortunately, I don't have like documents now on the, on the device to the. Thank you so much, Nicola, for for yeah. But the 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 thing here is that it will keep it will it will keep re, like reproducing text and text until we have here we can. We have. So. Here in this, um, so can someone, Dr. Mack, can you let me watch, can you see now? Uh, text and underneath it, heading one. Yeah, heading this two. is this is the format that you want when it comes to the text that you want to be, you want it to be reproduced. So you, I, I'm choosing here text. I can choose it as a heading or a heading to, or it, it relates the, the format or the numbered list or the bulleted list. And it's just the formatting here. This site, the, the AI commands are related to the shortcuts. So uh, the shortcuts that uh, you know screen readers operate with. The this works in Grammarly. So it's also there is a grammar mistake. It will show. So I can. Can you edit the text that it produces? Well, yes, here I can once. 
So I changed the word I wrote unfathomable instead of unimaginable. And then, and then it, 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 and then it wrote technology without the assistance of AI. So here we're seeing like words that are being created and you know, this would have, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm just, you know, listening to the chat. So here we're, we're just concerned about the writing, the implications on writing. And uh, um, earlier I was seeing a comment from Dr. Mervat about the, the journalism. So if people are writing an article or something like that, they are using such tools to, um, you know, write about, uh, to, to use it as a kind of an editor or um, a grammar check. While it, it goes beyond grammar, it goes beyond edits because it, says, it suggests ideas that are actually that might actually be biased. So it's it's still an AI. It still operates by Chat GPT, and still operates by, you know, the technology of gener of generative um, uh, artificial intelligence. So it generates not edits, and um, this text I actually I don't know anything about it. You know, I I wrote about it. I, So I'm I'm just trying. I copied the text now, so I new text here. So this is these are all ideas that we are actually seeing about anything and everything, and and literally it just produces content. And I've tried in multiple subjects this tool. I've tested it in philosophy, I've tested it in literature, I've tested it in actually all areas. And surprisingly, it gets sometimes a lot of nonsensical content that is not real. Um, it also sometimes reproduces, you know, a pattern, pattern text that is really noticeable that is an AI. You have like therefore a lot, you have by understanding so and so and so a lot. So you have a lot of, um, you know, mis, mis uh, uh, guided information. So it sometimes can say, a person said like John Dewey said so and so and so and so. And I've tried that in the constructivism uh, theory because I was actually interested how it will talk about the, something argumentative like that because it was like, uh, many people talked about the theory of, of education and I found that like attributing very nonsensical, some nonsensical content to what John Dewey said and fakes a lot of papers like in 1999, for example, Dewey said and said and said and said. So it, it was actually quite interesting to see how we are in an era of um, ethical dilemmas of producing content, but also if we use it to as a kind of a um, write, uh, the writing suggestion tool, it will be helpful. And um, and yes, this is basically how Jenny.ai works. There is also another tool that works with document that uh, um, I can show, which is, um, it's, it's similar to typeset, so I'm not gonna go into that. So it's illicit.org, it works actually like typeset or uh, size space. So it actually that you upload documents and it will then you know, produce uh, a graph for your literature review and such. But um, the tool that I will be showing now as well is called Chat PDF, and this tool is is so here. This is the tool. Can you see it uh, on the screen? Yes. So this needs you to upload something. It's also not free. It's, it has a subscription, but it has also a kind of, uh, you know, um, limited capacity of upload. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see something here on the computer to just upload and uh, I've got, So I've got this.
I'm just trying to see a, a very small document because I don't have the subscription for it. I don't use it. But uh, so this was an article about AI. So I I just so it's here. Ask anything. So I'm gonna ask it. Suggest. So. And here we go. This is the response. And it actually went into the PDF suggesting what the paper talks about and suggesting the main ideas. And it's actually quite also uh, wonderful because it's very accurate. And uh, yeah, and uh, so Vivian says that well, this is so scary. So as I, as I, as I I'm, said- I'm sorry, Esther, can you just um, enlarge the screen? Can you just maximize it full screen? Thank you. Is it now working well? Yes, great, thank you. It, the, yeah, the screen, sorry. Well, yeah, all this, this issues of this, this like um, the bots generating absurd responses and the effects that it can have on humans is, Actually, I just discovered the feature in this tool because like it wasn't it, it didn't like it wasn't actually it wasn't actually offering this idea of choosing the page number. So now it offers that I can I can write and then it went into the page file. And then I can I can ask it to do anything in this page. And which is kind of quite surprising because coming back to this idea of students who uh, want to summarize a reading or they, they find the class reading difficult, they, come, they can just subscribe into, to this tool and start asking questions about the main ideas or summarizing or, um, you know, chatting the paper. And I've also tried it with different subjects. I've tried it with things related to Shakespeare. I've tried it with things related to education and, uh, uh, also, um, you know, some science uh, papers, I've, I was really keen on testing it with the idea of uh, how it will uh, uh, understand molecules and uh, um, how it, it will understand uh, 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 the atomic structure and the chem in, in basic chemistry. And it didn't really uh, do quite a good job because it, it actually said very, um, you know, subjective, um, subjective um, ideas that were I found I actually wasn't convinced you know if I'm writing if I'm uh, cheating I wouldn't be convinced to take the ideas that were produced from this and tr and, and start copying them and start taking them uh, to yeah this, but that's uh, because you're a good student yes a lot of students aren't that smart it, exactly. you know or they just I, they don't understand what they're reading and so they'll just copy it and paste it they don't they're not really caring but go um, ahead. Yeah. Well, it's this idea of uh, I'll come back to Nicholas' thought about people who are non 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 like natives or um, second language uh, uh, users of English or something like that. So it might be difficult for them also to distinguish. And uh, I was I was in a a meeting with someone, and I remember this word that they had a student telling them. So chat GBT is a good opportunity for them that they can refine their grammar. So the other students want to, you know, make fun of them or something like that. And this was too scary for me because um, now we're in an idea of social, uh, uh, you know, a problem of social justice or social, social injustice. That language defines who we are and people are afraid of that their language will define them. So um, 
you know, I don't want to take too much. Um, Vivian says, I want to, I was hoping for tips of creating assignments. So perhaps, uh, you know, if, if someone has uh, insights, but there are so were... many other AI sessions that are about creating assignments, Vivian. So if you look at the ones Mark Marino and Anna Mills are going to do, I'm going to put the link to those sessions because this one's about showcasing AI tools. It's not about creating assignments with AI. But the other ones are directly with people who have created assignments with AI or they have ideas about that. I'll put the link to all the AI sessions in the chat. Yeah, so uh, these were the two tools that, uh, you know, I wanted to bring them into the, the discussion because I find them actually very, you know, this tool, um, I, I tried using it for the good the good use. I, I just uploaded my CV and I told, please let me know that formatting issues. And this was a good use, you know, as a visually impaired, I can say that, you know, if if, if these tools will, will help in this idea and really did a good job telling me where to, you know, adjust the font and where the font is not really correct and where the font is not really, um, you know, um, uh, need, needs adjustments. So it was, it was, it was actually insightful. So um, I'll leave the floor to Nicola again so she can lead us. Um, uh, or she can, she can, you know, uh, she has insights. Uh, Nicola, do you want me to do po.com very quickly? Yes, that would be great. And I, th I want to say thank you so much, Yasser. Um, it was lovely to see and hear from your experiences of, around those tools. I've added them to our slide deck. Um, yeah, sure, go for it, Maha. Okay. So apologies to everyone at my institution because I've shown them this before. <laughs> But um, so po.com, I learned about from another, uh, an educator somewhere else in the world, probably from the UK. And the reason it's so useful, uh, first of all, it allows you access to several AI tools at the same time. Uh, so you can try how different AI text generators respond to your prompt and compare them. Um, but also more importantly, in Egypt and Saudi Arabia and a couple of other countries, I know for sure, don't have access to ChatGPT without VPN and pretending that you live in another country and having a phone number and stuff like that. But Po.com gives you access to a lot of uh, different tools, including ChatGPT and including one prompt for GPT-4, which is usually not free, right? So I'm on my phone. I'm going to share my entire screen. And I hope you guys can see. All right, so when I went to po.com right now on my phone, apparently now there's a free app, which I haven't tried, but I'll try to stay in the browser and see it. And so Sage is one of the tools it allows you access to, GPT-4, limited access to one prompt a day, uh, Claude, Claude Instance, ChatGPT. These are new. Google Palm is new. I've never tried that. And Dragonfly doesn't exist anymore, apparently. But um, GPT-4, so people who have never seen GPT-4, you can try something with it. So... I'm going to just say, pretend you are a psychology professor and write a syllabus for an educational psychology course with four main readings, two projects, and two big assignments or something. Let's see what it does. Now, the nice thing with the GPT-4, at least when it comes here, is that it actually formats it nicely too. So honestly, I, as an educational developer, I sometimes use AI. I didn't do it a lot, but I've done it before, where I use AI before I meet a faculty member to see what it gives me in terms of what would a sil their syllabus look like or look at assignments similar to what they do and what it would give me. And it sometimes gives me ideas. I would say it would be similar to if I searched the internet and looked at uh, four or five different syllabi of a similar course, but it just sort of synthesizes it into one and then you can just regenerate and take a look at another one. So it's kind of useful that way, um, especially if it's something I understand a little bit about. So it just saves me time in researching it, you know? Um, I have no idea if these are real readings. So. But I mean, Bruner obviously is a real person. Uh, Carol Dweck is a real person. I would not assign her in a psycho educational psychology course. And I hate this person called Hattie, <laughs> but they're real people. <laughs> the, these articles might be real um, or books might be real. And then the projects look good. 
like a classroom observation analysis and a learning intervention design sounds like a good idea for an educational psychology course. A theory application paper sounds good. An assessment critique sounds like, these sound like good assignments for an educational psychology course. For me, like, I think this is not a bad idea. And it's got like an entire week schedule and it has topics that I think make sense to be included. It's not what I studied when I studied educational psychology, but they could work and it's still working, right? And even has like recommendations for when things could be due, which is interesting. Um, it even has a breakdown for, sometimes the breakdown doesn't add up to a hundred, but it, this one I think adds up to a hundred, yeah. So yeah, so this is what GPT-4 would look like. The formatting and the tables are really nice because with regular chat GPT and most other AIs, you don't get that. Um, and I've never seen Google Palm, so I'm curious. I'm gonna try that one later. I'm gonna try to figure out how to stop the screen share. Um, yeah. Mervet, I, I know you have a question. I'm just gonna tell you a funny anecdote. I, I gave my students an assignment to uh, take a look at this AI and, uh, and try it and give me feedback on it and what it did when they gave it a prompt. And one of my not very smart students used AI to write her reflection on this AI. And so because ChatGPT does not know what po.com is, uh, the, the student's uh, article said something about poetry and critique, literary critique, because it assumed that the website was about Edgar Allan Poe, the poet. And so I told her, you used AI to write this. So that was kind of silly of her. Um, anyway, Mirvet, what's your question? I mean, I'm... I'm... I'm wondering because in, in many cases, I think this saves lots of time. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, being an expert in, in, in the field, you're, you're definitely going to be uh, able to judge whether or not these ideas are going to be just like what you said now, I mean, uh, this is not what you've learned when you were taking this course. However, these uh, are ideas that perhaps you would like more or perhaps you're excluded completely. And uh, regarding textbooks, uh, uh, usually before even thinking of it, uh, of, a, of a course or designing a course, I, I usually uh, check uh, textbooks and see what would work, what wouldn't work, and what would be best to to uh, um, um, according to the nature of the the course that I'm designing. So I mean, something of the sort would definitely add up to my vision, my my, uh, and and facilitate the mission of creating it from scratch. So. Uh, uh, I, I'm very reluctant to see that this is something that may uh, to take as is and copy and paste, especially if you're, you're not uh, acquainted or you're not uh, an expert in whatever you're producing, that is definitely not uh, acceptable. But it is definitely a facilitator. It facilitates the process of designing a course, of looking into ideas that would add up uh, perhaps more developed, perhaps uh, different than what your interests are um, so, so yeah. When I'm designing a course for, for um, entertainment uh, media, uh, what would be entertaining to me may not be actually um, um, the 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 core of entertainment to others. So, so I mean, it adds up. Yani, when I when I Google around, especially course uh, syllabi, as the, when I browse around the course syllabi, I think it gives me. Um, uh, yeah, I, mean, I find it so interesting because it gives me ideas that are so very not um, I wouldn't have th thought of um, if I had I hadn't I looked into all these uh, um, uh, created um, syllabus uh, syllabi. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I this is sort of the thing. Like what you're saying is you can't use AI well if you don't know what you're talking about in the first place. The AI can save you time, but then you still need to revise and integrate your, what you already know with it and check some stuff and all that, which is, I think, why it's tricky for students who don't know that they don't know <laughs> or they don't know how much they don't know. And so they might use it in ways that are dangerous or, or harmful or just not, not good. But for us, I think it can save time. Someone in the chat, uh, Kristen, asked if I could revise, ask it to revise the, the assignments. If I was using anything other than GPT-4, I could do that. But because GPT-4 only allows me one prompt per day, I'd have to wait until tomorrow to try that. But generally, whenever it creates a syllabus for me, I can ask it to revise certain things based on certain judgment that I have to make an assessment more authentic. Or in the first place, when I give it the prompt, I can say, make sure that all the assessments are authentic, right? So that's, uh, that's another thing. 
And this is why I'm saying as an educational developer, I know a little bit about a lot of the courses if it's not like an engineering course. And I'm a computer scientist too, so I know enough about math and physics. And you know, I know enough about enough subjects uh, that something like this could be useful to, for me as I support a faculty member in designing their assessments, for example, or things like that. But if it's something you know nothing about, then and you use what it bring, gives you, you're gonna look stupid. It's probably better to just download a real syllabus by someone and use that, right? Um. Oh, well, I mean, it's not, uh, you know, Vivian is saying chat that OpenAI now looks so rudimentary. It's rudimentary c compared to GPT-4 for sure. Um, but also you have access to all these other ones, right? So I have Sage and Claude, and Claude also has two kinds. One of them is premium and one of them is not. So the premium one is better. Chat GPT is free, but we have no access to it in some countries. So free doesn't really mean everyone has access to it. That's the point. Yeah, Stella, I think having one prompt today makes you work harder at writing a better prompt. And that's part of the AI literacies that Nicola and I talked about when we did a session on critical AI literacy, right? Like prompts writing is a literacy now. I think a lot of people said in the future, you would hire someone as a prompt writer or something. Okay, bye, Joe. It's good to see you again. All right. And let me see. Did I miss any questions, Nicola? Um, I think Chris, uh, Christina also asked if you were to write not just how to make an assessment more authentic, but also chat GPT proof. <laughs> I think that's yeah. everyone's. I don't moment. think we can do that. I don't know if we can do that, but maybe in the future. <laughs> yeah, there is a term called prompt engineering. I don't know if I've seen it like in an actual job description, but could be a skill under someone's, uh, you know, I don't know if there's a job title, but we've heard people say it, but I don't know if it's real. Oh, it's yeah. definitely being listed as one of the AI literacy skill. I'm not surprised it's turning into a job. <laughs> I don't know. Full-time job would be very funny, but I, there are a lot of full-time jobs that are unexpected too, so. Hey, it's like social media managers back in the days. True, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. We, we never know what's going to be the, yeah, what's happening next year and the year after, you're right? I don't think anybody imagined the extent to which ChatGPT would uh, affect us. Like you see it at the beginning, oh, it can't be that good. <laughs> and then it gets better and you're like, oh no. <laughs> So, and then every time you say, oh, but ChatGPT has limitations, and then they invent these other tools that access the, the internet, like the Bing AI is accessing live internet. It's not looking at up to, until 2021, for example, giving you real references. But still has plug plugins, right? The the ones that have ChatGPT4, you can right. get plugins. GPT4 have plugins, yeah, that's true. Right? And, and I heard that they are too advanced, like the Scholar, plugin i i've never um, i haven't tried the, them myself but mm -hmm. um, i heard that it's more advanced um, mm -hmm. yeah it is and it can produce real references it has a i think it's color plugin or academic academia plugin um christina yes that's very true we need to know which tools our students will and will not have access to because some of them may have the funds to pay for something like gpt4 and others will not and that's also not very fair we don't want more than FPT. And some people are saying, well, maybe institutions should subscribe. And then the institutions are like, we're not sure we want to endorse this. So, yeah. Yeah, we have two minutes left. Does anyone else have questions or comments? I just wanted to, um, Alia and I were having a little background chat and she wanted to uh, demonstrate a tool. But Alia, I don't want to exclude you. Hopefully, if you're available on the 8th, um, please, um, could if you could share your tool then. And I put the link. Um, I'm honestly not sure if I'll be able to make it on the 8th, but um, I'm just sharing here the chat box. Some, you know. Oh, thank you. Takeaways. Thank you, Alia. So, Alia, what's the tool that you were gonna gonna showcase? So at least we know what it is. Yeah. 
Oh. oh my god, that URL. I know, right? Mm. What 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 are you showing on your on what are you sharing now? What is this one? That is just the link to give us feedback, but I got it from the Eventbrite email, so it's a really long one. Oh, it's just like. Sorry, just, you know. I, really, I think we're seeing Alia's screen right now. What is Alia's screen? Yeah. So it's called ROFT. Is this real or Oh fake my text? God, I was actually explaining the website the whole time and then I found out I'm the You're muted. muted? Oh, oh my no. God. Okay. I'm so glad I stayed. Thank you, you guys. Oh my God. Thank you. Okay, okay so I just basically, it's similar to what Maha previously talked about, which is which face is real. And uh, basically, instead of faces, you're just basically looking at uh, text. So here, for example, when opening this, this website, you can click on recipes, for instance, it can be used as an icebreaker activity or to get the students to differentiate between what is human generated or what is AI generated. And then for recipes, for example, you see here ingredients for homemade chocolate syrup. And then you are here to identify if this is human written or sent or machine generated. Let's say that it is machine generated. And then it asks you some questions here. Uh, so what makes you think that is computer generated? And then you answer some questions. Let's say, for example, I didn't even read what the ingredients were, but let's assume that it's that and that. Okay, there are here, there are criteria here to select from, then reveal at the end. And I got zero points, as you can all see. Uh, the sentence was actually human written, not machine generated. So it's a, actually like a fun uh, game to play with students. And another one is uh, perplexity and the um, this one actually I use for um, creating characters or a dialogue or a debate between uh, students ab about this prompt. So I worked with a team and together we came up with this prompt, create a conversation among three personalities about whether people are right-brained or left-brained, have the personalities disagree with each other and make the conversation have several turns, about 300 words. So we ended up having three characters here and this can be used, you know, for students to practice their reading skills or English, and as well as you know, um, take turns uh, reading out different characters, um, being other, you know, putting themselves in other people's shoes, and then they can reflect on this and have some form of debate among them. So this is the the second tool about perplexity, and I'm sure Maha knows a lot about per perplexity as well. But this was the way we used it as like with my team uh, as another AI tool. So those are the main tools I wanted to share with you guys. But they're also included in the Google Doc I shared with all of the lovely tools you've shared as well. So thank you all so much. Thank you so much, Alia. So Thank I'll you. Stop the recording here. Thank you, Nicola. Bye bye, everyone.